This is Jeremiah Reardon, Doctor of Education, Professor, Teacher, Trainer, and Subject Matter Expert in Online Teaching and Learning. My online course experience began in 1999, when Bill Clinton was President, the Ericsson R380 was our first smartphone, and 52-year-old Donald Trump began his first campaign for President, pledging to name Oprah Winfrey as his running mate. I have an earned doctorate from Northeastern, multiple certifications from Quality Matters, considered the gold standard in online course design best practices, and I was honored with a Course of Distinction Award for Outstanding Course Design from Massachusetts Colleges Online. Over two decades, I have surveyed hundreds of my former online students and facilitated focus groups to determine the 10 best practices of successful online students. Using this continuous improvement process model, I have been designing, developing, and delivering, and redesigning online courses from multiple areas of study using Blackboard, Moodle, Google Classroom, and Canvas, and teaching more than 250 online classes over the last two decades, and submitting final grades for more than 3,600 online college and high school students. I present these 10 best practices of my most successful online students to help students new to online learning or those struggling in their online classes earn better grades, reduce your anxiety, and gain a better grasp of your course subject matter. Let's get started. Online Student Success Practice Number 1 Get Organized and Stay Organized from the Start Get Organized and Stay Organized As soon as you know you are taking an online class, create a dedicated file on your laptop or desktop or in an online repository such as the cloud and title the file with the name of your course. And as the course progresses, save every single file and download from your online course into that one dedicated folder. Additionally, once you receive the syllabus for the course and you download it and saved it to your course file on your desktop, go into that folder and create new subfiles for the main topics from the course. For example, if your syllabus states the instructor posts a weekly quiz for the class, you should create a subfolder called Quizzes and save all your quizzes to that file. If the syllabus indicates weekly homework assignments will be a part of the class, create a subfolder called Weekly Homework Assignments. Use the same rule to create subfolders for each major topic indicated in the syllabus, such as discussion boards, term papers, extra credit, PowerPoints, and PDFs. Practice number two of successful online students. Schedule course work time like a traditional live class that meets weekly. Many of my most successful online students revealed they built course work time into their weekly schedules as though attending a traditional face-to-face -face class of instruction that met weekly in a brick and mortar classroom. As soon as the class started, these students scheduled three, four, five, or more hours into their weekly schedules for completing all course assignments from my online course as though they were attending a scheduled class meeting in a classroom with me as the instructor. Additionally, these students would set those blocks of dedicated course work time to repeat every week automatically on their laptop, PC, or smartphone calendar for the duration of the entire semester, quarter, or term. So they took comfort knowing they would always have blocked off time for coursework for the duration of the course. I also learned that some students who describe themselves as mature and disciplined in their surveys sometimes preferred to block off a single three or four hour block on just one day of the week for the entire semester to dedicate to just my online course. These self-described mature and disciplined students were still able to earn high letter grades of A or A- and demonstrated solid subject matter mastery of course learning outcomes. They knew their work ethic best by being honest with themselves in reflecting on their past behaviors 
when they have had to complete brick and mortar classes, and they knew they could focus all their efforts and energy for three to four consecutive hours on completing that week's posted coursework at the highest quality. Speaking directly, surveys and focus groups revealed students who had not yet worked in a full-time position of employment tended to do best in an online course by blocking off an hour a day over three to five days each week for the entire semester. Additionally, many students said this practice of scheduling multiple hour-long blocks over a week into their schedules resulted in improved time management skills and significantly lowered their stress about having enough time for completing their coursework. Students must keep in mind this practice of blocking off three, four, or more hours per week on your schedule is for a single, typical, semester-long online course, which usually requires between 37.5 to 45 instructor contact hours over a 15-week period. If you're taking two, three, four, five, or even six online credit courses, you need to block off the appropriate amount of hours on your calendar for each course you're taking. And some students recommended color coding each course work time block, so a quick glance at their weekly calendar was a visual inventory of what coursework was due next. For example, if you're taking five online courses over a traditional 15-week semester, you should be blocking off a minimum of 15 to 20 hours of dedicated course work time each week to complete all your coursework, three to five hours per course minimum. And your highest achieving peer students would suggest blocking off additional time for reading text assignments each week for each course. For additional consideration, if you are an online student taking an accelerated course in 10 weeks, seven and a half weeks, six weeks, a five week summer course, or even a three week accelerated winter semester course. Due to the intense delivery of information and required absorption of learning materials by the student, I strongly suggest you dedicate more time per week to achieve highest academic success in an accelerated course, cramming 37.5 to 45 hours of instructor contact hours into an accelerated window of time. As a note of caution, according to my research, students most likely to experience the least amount of success in my online courses reported they did not block off time each week dedicated to completing assignments. And they admitted they often completed coursework when they could find time in their busy schedules which sometimes resulted in little or no work submitted. They also admitted they often rushed to complete work last minute before deadlines. And they knew their grades often suffered due to their lack of planning. Best practice number three of successful online students. Block off major assignment due dates on your preferred online calendar. Setting reminders to count down for specific assignment due dates. My most successful students from my past online courses, upon being given access to the online course materials, would take the course syllabus and build all of my assignment due dates into their preferred online calendar. They also set reminders in the calendar for major assignments that represented major percentages of their final grade, such as midterm papers midterm exams, presentation due dates, final examinations, and extra credit assignments. They would also build in early alert reminders with a four-week, three-week, two-week, and one-week countdown reminder. And some students even progressed to a daily reminder for the final week until they submitted the assignment. Since you may be taking two, three, or more online classes at this time, the highest performing online students made sure they built time into their calendars for all the major assignments they knew would require more time and effort for them to do their best work. By building weekly countdown reminders into their calendars, 
from major assignments, such as a midterm paper. Many highly successful online students reported they not only had time to write their first draft, but they were also able to submit the paper to the Academic Writing Center for review and feedback. And they also had time to make necessary edits based on Writing Center feedback. Furthermore, most students who blocked time and countdown reminders into their calendars on the day they first received their course syllabus submitted their final paper before deadline. Not surprisingly, those who built major assignments into their calendars reported far lower stress over the running time of the course than the students who attempted to find time in their busy schedules to complete major assignments. As mentioned previously, several successful students recommended color coding all course work time and major assignments by course using one dedicated color. So a quick glance at their calendar on their smartphone or PC screen would quickly visually inventory specific course work time and major assignment deadlines for each course. The use of these simple calendar management techniques was often credited with improved time management in student academic, professional, and personal activities, as well as highest academic achievement. Best practice number four of successful online students. Check your school email every day and communicate with your instructor weekly. Students should check their school email every day and they should also communicate with their teacher on a weekly basis using either their institutional email, through discussion board exchanges within their online class, or by telephone. Some students reported in their surveys they thought their school email account was simply an add-on benefit from their institution, but not a requirement for them to use. However, your instructor uses their institutional email as their primary communication tool within the school. So students should know you were provided in an institutional email for the purpose of communicating with your professor, with school administration, and with your fellow students. Get in the habit of checking your school email every day and try to communicate with your instructor every week. Successful online student practice number five. Ask questions. Let your teacher know when you don't understand something. Supporting the concept of communicating weekly with your online instructor, another great habit of my most successful online students was to ask questions, often through emails, but also in class discussion boards or scheduled online class chats. Most often, if one student isn't grasping a lesson, or part of a lesson, other students may be experiencing the same level of confusion. While you as a student are completing coursework alone in your home, students are not taking the class alone, as they have many other students in their virtual classroom. Your instructor has most likely covered this information in detail in traditional live classes, and knows it very well. But an online class does not allow for your instructor to read your body language, or see your facial expressions, or to see common body language indicators that a student, a group of students, or all students are not grasping the information being covered. Furthermore, best practices of online instruction have shown that once a student feels safe sharing questions on a lesson topic, and then seeing their peers may be experiencing the same confusion. Not only does the instructor know he or she may need to focus more efforts on the points in question, the student who asks questions are often found to participate more in the class after asking their questions. More participation in the class by the student often instills a deeper grasp of the course content. And not surprisingly, that deeper grasp of any subject matter cultivates their interest in the overall subject due to increased confidence and their recognition they have more in common with their peer students than they had assumed. 
The number six best practice of successful online students is to read all the information posted every week. My most successful online students revealed that they tended to read all the information I posted every week and started this practice with reading the course syllabus as soon as they had access to it. A syllabus is the student's guide to a course. It includes course policies, required textbooks, how the course will be run by the instructor, and what will be expected of the student, as well as a schedule of assignment due dates. The directions for successfully completing assignments are always written in the course syllabus. Since a well-designed course aims all energy and efforts at the student achieving the course learning objectives detailed in your syllabus. And modular learning objectives should be posted with each module of assignments. The course learning objectives are the overarching promise of the learning outcomes for the student for taking the course over a semester. And each week's modular learning objectives are the overarching promise of what the students should learn each week. As a result, every individual assignment in a week of online assignments supports the learning objectives for the week and thus they also align with the course learning objectives for the whole course. For example, if we are to look at this common three credit course on the screen now, the course learning objectives or CLOs specify a behavior, skill, or action that a student can demonstrate if they have achieved mastery of the various objectives seen on the screen, forming the foundation of the course. To build towards these overarching course objectives, every weekly class module requires specific modular learning objectives or MLOs, which are smaller observable or measurable critical course components consisting of learning materials, learning activities, and assessments, such as those appearing on the screen now. When an instructor prepares learning materials, learning activities, and assessments, they make sure they support the modular and course learning objectives. As such, a student missing even a single assignment may lack a full understanding of a critical course learning objective, and missing multiple assignments could result and significant impact on their final grade. Online student success practice number seven. Write, cut and paste, save and then post. Even 20 plus years into online learning, students sometimes spend hours working on a discussion board post. They perfect it, they click submit, and suddenly all their work is gone off into the oblivion of the internet unexplained. This sometimes happens when students lose their internet connection even for a millisecond, and though your screen stays the same, you were immediately logged out of your class and you won't find out until you click submit. While it happens far less today than when I first started teaching online, it still happens on the rare occasion. And continuous internet connectivity is sometimes just beyond our control. As such, I strongly recommend students complete common writing assignments such as discussion boards on their computer in Microsoft Word or Google Docs or a similar application and then cut and paste their finished written assignment directly to the discussion board and then click submit. Believe me and my past students that working on your writing assignment locally on your PC or laptop in Microsoft Word or Google Docs or a similar application and then running it through spell check and finally cutting and pasting your saved document as your finished post onto a discussion board will result in more successful academic work submitted by you at a higher level of quality due to the use of spell check and far less frustration on your part due to a dropped internet connection. Successful online student best practice number eight. In reviewing the surveys and in-depth discussions in focus groups with my past online students, and after instructing thousands of students over the years, I cannot stress the importance of always doing your own work. Passing someone else's work off as your own is plagiarism, and plagiarism is never acceptable. 
and a plagiarized assignment often results in an automatic failure for the assignment, and sometimes result in the student failing the entire course. With some institutions, sending students through the student conduct system for committing academic dishonesty. Doing your own work helps students gain a solid grasp on the subject matter of the course. And students should be aware that your instructor may use tools such as SafeAssign, Turnitin, or other plagiarism prevention tools designed to detect unoriginal content in students' papers by identifying areas of overlap between submitted assignments and existing works. Additionally, over the course of a quarter, term, or semester, your teacher is probably going to become very familiar with how you, as a student, express yourself in written form. So if you suddenly submit an assignment using words and phraseology inconsistent with your past writing assignments, and you are suddenly expressing your thoughts as though composed by another author, it is far more obvious than most students think, and your instructor will likely spot it and call you on it. And you just don't need the F on your transcript. Best practice number nine. Recognize online courses offer flexible learning, but are not easy. When the class starts, and students learn they are required to log into the course several times a week, check their email every day, complete writing assignments each week, complete time tests and quizzes, watch educational videos, and respond to written posts of their peers. Some students are often shocked at the amount of work expected in a course each week. To succeed in an online course, students should know they will still have to put in time and effort, the same as a traditional class offered in a brick and mortar classroom. Most learning management systems such as Blackboard, Moodle, and Canvas allow course instructors to view a detailed course report of all user activity inside content areas, overall time the student has spent in the course and detailed information about the student's activities while in assignments, and time spent on each activity, and much, much more. The course report also provides the instructor with the average amount of time spent by all students by day, by week, by month, and semester. So it provides instructors with a thorough snapshot of the amount of time high achieving students are spending accessing and exploring coursework, as well as those not logging in time and putting in weaker efforts. With the ability to run these course reports, when a student contacts me to say they are working very hard in my course, but are not doing as well as they expected, after a quick review of the student's assignment grades to date, I then run a course report for that individual student to see where they are putting their time and energy. For some of my students, the course report reveals long hours of effort and activity in different facets of my course, including where they are dedicating their efforts in the class and time they are putting into each assignment. When the student and I next communicate, the report information helps me advise them with strategies for improving their study practices and where to direct the student for assistance in other areas impacting academic performance, such as online tutoring through the Academic Support Center, assistance from the Writing Center, or I might advise the student to form an online study group with some of their peers from class. The final best practice for successful online students, practice number 10 is to make yourself the priority whenever working on coursework, and do not multitask. For 97.5% of the population, multitasking is believed to be impossible. As a matter of fact, when we believe we are multitasking, we are not really doing two or more things at once, but instead we are doing individual actions in rapid succession. The neuroscience is very clear on multitasking. Human brains are designed to monotask. One study revealed only 2.5% of people multitask effectively. When the rest of us perform two complex activities simultaneously, multitasking is simply an illusion. Neuroscientists studying the brain and how it works are concerned that our tendency in today's busy life is to divide our attention rather than focus our attention on a task at hand. 
Dividing our attention has been shown to have extremely negative impacts on attentiveness, learning, and mindfulness. In short, take the time you have blocked off on your schedule in practices two and three. Shut off your phone. Turn off your music. Lock your bedroom door or your office door. And make yourself 100% unavailable to the disturbances by others. Ideally, create your own library-like environment at home or perhaps at your work. Or go to the library and make that place your fortress of academic solitude but it must be a place where you can tune out all distractions for the period of blocked off course work time that you have on your schedule. Talk to your family, friends, and workmates as soon as you block off time on your schedule to complete your coursework and clearly notify them that the times you are blocking off are 100% reserved for you to complete your coursework and let them know you are counting on their support in helping you achieve your academic best, and then rigidly adhere to abiding by your scheduled academic me time, focusing solely on getting your coursework done without any interruptions. Multiple studies have demonstrated that multitasking or trying to work in an environment in which you are interrupted will negatively impact your performance, including your online student success. Let's wrap up our presentation with a quick review of our 10 best practices of online student success. Best practice number one, get and stay organized on your computer from the start. Best practice number two, schedule course work time like a traditional live class that meets weekly. Best practice number three, block off assignment due dates on your preferred online calendar setting reminders to count down for specific assignment due dates. Best practice number four, check your school email every day and communicate with your instructor weekly through either email, telephone, text message, or discussion board original or response post. Best practice number five, ask questions. Let your teacher know when you don't understand something. Best practice number six of my best students was to read all the information posted each and every week. Best practice number seven, write, cut and paste, save your original, and then post the assignment to your online class. Recapping the number eight best practice of my most successful online students, do your own work, always. Best practice number nine, recognize online courses are for flexible learning but are not easy. Best practice number 10. Make yourself the priority whenever working on coursework and do not multitask. You now have the 10 best practices of my most successful online students gathered over 20 plus years, 250 online courses, more than 3,600 online students based on feedback from quantitative surveys and qualitative focus groups and hundreds of one-on-one -on -one discussions with my past online students. You don't have to adopt all of these practices to have a successful online academic experience. But by adopting three or more of these practices over your current and future semesters, and studying smarter, not harder, you will gain a much better subject mastery of your course learning objectives and benefit from a more successful online learning experience. And I leave you with my favorite quote as both a teacher and as a lifelong learner. Never stop learning, because life never stops teaching. This is Dr. Jeremiah Reardon, signing out.